The vastness of the Pacific Ocean reflects the staggering gap between China and the United States in laser weapon technology. Over the years, Chinese state media has made bold claims with headlines like "How powerful are China's laser weapons? A decade ahead of the U.S. and capable of destroying satellites." Such claims are often propped up by references to research papers, such as those from the Chinese academic optical publication Acta Optica Sinica, which allege breakthroughs like enabling continuous laser firing. At first glance, these assertions sound impressive. For those unfamiliar with the technical details, they might even seem credible. But the reality? A different story altogether. Despite the grandiose declarations, China has yet to showcase a reliable, fully functioning laser weapon. In August this year, photos surfaced on X allegedly showing a laser weapon system aboard a Chinese Type 071 amphibious transport dock ship. The device, a spherical structure resembling a plastic ball, was described as futuristic. However, critics noted it looked more like a Hollywood prop. Naturally, the big questions arose: What is its range? How powerful is it? Can it actually neutralize significant targets? Strikingly, no technical details have been disclosed. This silence has only fueled skepticism. Skepticism, with international analysts speculating the device might merely be a test setup to see if it even powers on. It's a far cry from the cutting-edge weaponry China claims to possess. So far, none of China's publicly touted laser weapons have surpassed a power output of 30 kilowatts. To put this into perspective, their current systems can only perform soft kills on small drones. Such as those made by Chinese technology company DJI, these lasers essentially blind the drone's cameras, forcing them to crash. It's hardly the groundbreaking technology one would expect after so much fanfare. Now let's compare this to the United States. The U.S. has been steadily advancing in laser weapon technology, achieving tangible results. Three operational laser weapon systems with power outputs ranging from 30 to 150 kilowatts have already been deployed on Aegis destroyers. This year, the U.S. Army tested a high-energy 300 kilowatt laser weapon capable of destroying cruise missiles and artillery shells. And if that wasn't enough, aerospace manufacturer Lockheed Martin raised the bar last year, successfully testing a 500 kilowatt laser weapon prototype that can intercept ballistic missiles. Let's take a closer look at the reality behind China's much-hyped laser weapons. In October, international media captured images in Tehran of a system called the Shengneng Shield, reportedly made in China. Its power, only 10 to 20 kilowatts, significantly weaker than the 30 kilowatt Silent Hunter system China sold to Saudi Arabia in 2018. But here's the kicker: after firing for just three minutes, the Shenmeng shield needs a five-minute cooldown to recharge. Essentially, it's a glorified laser pointer designed to blind sensors. China has the audacity to market it as a non-lethal blinding attack, while it claims a range of three kilometers. In practice, it needs to be within 1.5 kilometers. To have any real effect, if the target happens to be a drone equipped with anti-interference and source tracking capabilities, this so-called weapon could easily become the target itself. Also, the Shenmeng Shield is just a rebranded version of the LW-30 laser defense system showcased at the 2021 Zhuhai Air Show. Back then, the LW-30, along with the OW-5, operated at the same 30 kilowatt power level as China's 2014 SkyGuard system. Seven years have passed, and still there's no improvement in power output. And yet, China continues to market it as if it's groundbreaking technology. Is this what they mean by being 10 years ahead of the U.S.? A 2019 report already debunked these claims, revealing that China's laser systems still rely on outdated CO2 laser technology. It's technology that the U.S. abandoned in the 1970s. Since then, the U.S. has advanced to chemical and solid-state lasers, leaving China far behind. These advancements have enabled the U.S. to develop laser systems with outputs up to 500 kilowatts, a level of power China can only aspire to. For example, at the 2017 International Defense Exhibition in Abu Dhabi, China showcased the Silent Hunter, a system with a 30 kilowatt output designed to counter small drones. Saudi Arabia bought a few units for testing, but chose not to make further purchases, likely because the system failed to meet expectations. Now let's turn to the United States, where progress happens steadily and without the fanfare.
In 2020, the USS Portland, an American destroyer, successfully used a 150-kilowatt laser weapon to shoot down a drone over the Gulf of Aden. The following year, it went a step further by neutralizing a surface target. This solid-state laser weapon, developed under Solid-State Laser Technology Maturation Program, showcases the tangible advancements the U.S. has achieved. Now, let's look at the U.S. Navy's Odin laser system. Despite its modest 30 kilowatt output, it was deployed aboard the USS Dewey destroyer back in October 2019, focusing on countering drones and missiles. Since then, Odin has been installed on eight Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. Next comes the Helios system, boasting 120 kilowatts. Developed under a project awarded to Lockheed Martin in 2015, it progressed rapidly. By 2018, the U.S. Navy had requested funding from Congress to test and deploy the system on the USS Portland, and by 2019, it was installed and operational. In 2022, the Helio system was further deployed on the USS Preble, a destroyer, showcasing its growing integration into the Navy's arsenal. Helios is capable of hard-kill actions against small boats, aircraft, and missiles. Now integrated with the Aegis combat system, Helios-equipped ships like the USS Preble are patrolling global hotspots, with the Preble making a notable appearance in Yokosuka, Japan this September. This steady progress has even influenced the design of next-generation U.S. destroyers, which plans for multiple laser systems on board. In stark contrast, China's installation of a laser system on its Type 071 amphibious ship has been accompanied by silence on technical specifications, despite the accompanying propaganda. The disparity couldn't be clearer. The U.S. Army is also pushing boundaries. In 2021, 250 kilowatt laser weapons were mounted on striker vehicles for testing, targeting drones and artillery shells. This year, the Army has gone further with a 300 kilowatt high energy laser weapon, capable of intercepting cruise missiles. Meanwhile, the Chinese Army lags far behind, with systems like the 30 kilowatt Silent Hunter and the LW 30, or the barely functional 50 kilowatt OW 5 A 50. These systems haven't even even undergone meaningful battlefield testing, let alone demonstrated the ability to intercept artillery shells. And what about putting laser weapons on aircraft? For China, that remains a pipe dream. The U.S. first tested laser weapons on large platforms like the C-130 Hercules military transport aircraft, which have ample space and power to accommodate the technology. Once the technology matured, they moved on to smaller fighter jets like the F-35 and F-15. In contrast, China's military aircraft already struggle with underpowered engines. Adding an energy-hungry laser system would severely compromise range and combat effectiveness. In short, it's impractical. The numbers speak volumes. The U.S. had deployed ship-based laser weapons with outputs up to 150 kilowatts, while China has yet to surpass the 100 kilowatt threshold. The U.S. tested a 500 kilowatt high-energy laser weapon last year, capable of intercepting ballistic missiles. Meanwhile, China remains stuck in the 50 kilowatt range, only capable of disrupting small drones. The so-called 10-year lead China boasts about doesn't hold up when faced with reality. The development trajectory of laser weapons is crystal clear. 50 kilowatts can handle small drones. 150 kilowatts can target standard drones. 300 kilowatts can take down missiles. And 500 kilowatts can intercept ballistic missiles. The U.S. has already hit the 500 kilowatt mark, while China is still fumbling with 30 kilowatts, barely enough to blind small UAVs. And it's not just one company leading the charge in the U.S. Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Raytheon are all actively contributing, building a robust, multifaceted foundation for laser weapon technology. This isn't a one-off project, but a result of a coordinated effort that showcases the U.S.'s unmatched technological superiority. America's dominance in laser weapon development is undisputed. In August 2023, China's National University of Defense Technology claimed to have developed an innovative cooling system for continuous laser firing, publishing their findings in Acta Optica Sinica. They touted an internal beam paths regulator, 
which, upon closer examination, is essentially just a glorified air conditioner. If breakthroughs were real, why haven't they produced a functional prototype in over a year? The laser system installed on their Type 071 ship has been sitting idle for four months without even a single test run. It's like China's Fujian aircraft carrier and its much publicized electromagnetic catapult system. From sea trials in May till now, it still hasn't conducted a single aircraft launch. To put it bluntly, most of China's laser technology development relies on theft, and a case exposed in March 2024 underscores this reality. The U.S. Treasury and Justice Departments imposed sanctions on Wuhan Xiaorezhi Science and Technology Company, a shell company with a registered capital of just 250,000 yuan, equivalent to 34,000 U.S. dollars. The small front company was revealed to be a cover for the Chinese Ministry of State Security, specializing in stealing cutting-edge technology from the West. Its affiliated hacker group, APT31, relentlessly targeted the U.S. defense industrial base, IT sector, and energy departments, breaching companies like flight simulator manufacturers and aerospace contractors. Once stolen, the technology was funneled directly into China's industrial chain. Wuhan Xiaorezhi collaborated with major players like China's space Sanjiang Group Corporation, Hubei Jiguang, and the China Optics and Optoelectronics Manufacturers Association, quickly pushing stolen data into industrialization. However, these theft-driven breakthroughs lacked foundational understanding and innovation, resulting in subpar technology. Systems like the 2014 Low Altitude Guard, the 2017 Silent Hunter, and the 2021 LW30 all plateaued at 30 kilowatt power levels. In the years since, there's been little progress. Wuhan Xiaorezhi's role was even more pronounced in its cooperation with Russia. The company partnered with a laser firm in Yekaterinburg, focusing on advanced fields like photonics, laser crystal materials, and next-generation solid-state lasers. These technologies are critical for applications ranging from aircraft carriers to nuclear submarines. Through gray market international deals, China attempted to patch its weak R&D foundation with foreign components. But despite these efforts, it remains plagued by a lack of self-reliant technological depth. The so-called laser weapon on China's Type 071 amphibious ship is likely a patchwork of stolen and repurposed technologies. Knowing the fragility of their creation, China avoids releasing performance data or conducting combat tests for fear of exposing its shortcomings. And that infamous claim of continuous laser firing? It's likely based on stolen theoretical data, not a practical, functional product. A Chinese mechanical engineer once said, It's so hard to work these days. Project teams demand all kinds of fluid and stealth designs, but while they look good on paper, we can't manufacture them. The engineering team constantly reports difficulties, and management keeps making us revise everything. It's exhausting. His remarks cut to the core of the problem. China's technological development often resembles a balloon filled with hot air, grandiose claims without the foundational substance needed for real innovation. Fancy blueprints don't translate into workable solutions without the critical steps of manufacturing and testing. China's reliance on hacking to steal technology and its haphazard domestic implementation inevitably falls apart at the critical threshold of true innovation. Real technological power isn't built on stolen blueprints, but on decades of consistent R&D and validation. They has been developing laser weapons since 1971. By 1978, it successfully used chemical lasers to shoot down missiles. During the 1980s, President Reagan's Star Wars program brought megawatt-class laser weapons into space space for missile interception tests. These milestones, shooting down intercontinental ballistic missiles as early as the 1980s, are decades-old achievements. By 2010, they had refined its laser weapons to hit intercontinental ballistic missiles during their boost phase, proving the feasibility of laser-based missile defense. In contrast, China's laser weapon development relies heavily on stolen technology, rebranded to deceive domestic audiences. But behind the propaganda, even China's own engineers don't have confidence in its implementation. The strategy is simple. As long as the regime can maintain the public's loyalty and trust, they'll say whatever they need to. Whether those promises are ever fulfilled doesn't matter. After all, most people move on to the next headline in a few months, and nobody follows up on the bold claims. This self-congratulatory approach helps the CCP maintain a fragile illusion of legitimacy.
Meanwhile, on the international stage, the U.S. has spent decades methodically advancing laser weapon technology, step by step, from conceptual designs to real-world deployment. In contrast, China's efforts resemble unfinished construction projects, grand on paper but falling apart in execution. Even basic performance parameters for their laser systems remain undisclosed, and their technical achievements lean more on exaggerated rhetoric than actual breakthroughs. It's no surprise that the disparity has become a laughingstock. Let's examine some of the so-called achievements of China's laser weapons on the global stage in recent years. In 2020, the Chinese Navy reportedly aimed a laser at a U.S. Navy P-8A patrol aircraft in the South China Sea, nearly impairing the vision of American pilots. In 2022, Australia's Defense Ministry accused the Chinese Navy of targeting an Australian P-8A patrol aircraft with a laser in northern waters, endangering the crew. In 2023, the Philippine Coast Guard reported that a Chinese vessel used a military-grade laser against its crew near Second Thomas Shoal, causing temporary blindness. In 2024, the Philippines again accused the Chinese Coast Guard ships of using lasers in the South China Sea to interfere with the navigation of Philippine vessels. While the U.S. uses its laser weapons to destroy drones, ships, and missiles, China resorts to cheap tactics like blinding opponents to create a semblance of relevance. And yet, they still have the audacity to claim they're 10 years ahead of the U.S. With a gap this wide, even the entire Earth isn't enough to illustrate the disparity. If China truly led by 50 years, why would they resort to using lasers to blind people's eyes? They'd be using lasers to sink aircraft carriers, or better yet, target the moon. The CCP's propaganda, no matter how elaborate, can't obscure the fact that its technology relies on theft, deception, and superficial packaging. Take Wuhan Xiaoraizhi Technology Company, one of the entities sanctioned by the U.S. It's a prime example of China's role as a technology thief on the global stage. In summary, whether it's China's laser weapons, military prowess, or diplomatic strategies, the pattern remains the same. Bold claims about unlimited cooperation with Russia ring hollow when they won't even openly support Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And for all the talk about reunifying Taiwan by force, they haven't dared even take the smallest step toward making that a reality. This time, however, they've overplayed their hand. Real technological strength exposes all the pretense and posturing. In the face of genuine innovation, all the CCP's empty words crumble to dust, revealing the stark reality: a regime that's built on theft, deceit, and self-aggrandizement, masking a core of weakness and incompetence that no amount of propaganda can hide.